Welcome to each and all of you. This is an extraordinary resource for your community. Um, I am just so impressed that you not only have this community library, lending, borrowing, donating, buying of system, but you also have these extraordinary opportunities to come together in person Yay. Um, with so many of your community leaders and to be inspired and educated. So thank you so much, Nikki and Jordan and our tech goddess Ariel here and my creative guru, David. Thank you uh, for all of the support and help and and bringing this um, program to your awareness tonight. And Before we begin, I'd like for us to take a deep breath and to pay respect and honor for our native Rogue Valley tribes on whose land we stand. Our gratitude and our hearts for the wisdom that they seeded in this land that brought us here. Thank you. So, I'm going to begin with a really fun little um, opportunity for hopefully you to be stimulated, inspired, tickled. Um, and I invite you to see this, I'm going to call it a word salad, not as an observation, not as kind of just something fun to look at, but rather, welcome in, uh, but rather to really have a moment as each word appears to see how they might land and even more perhaps, instead of just a Q&A afterwards, I'd like to really offer a space for you to share an experience if you like and if you feel comfortable in doing so. So I invite you to watch this little magic that our tech goddess is going to present for us in a few moments, but first, I'd like to give you an opportunity to bring yourselves here. So if you feel comfortable closing your eyes, and if you don't, feel free to gaze at the floor. And just take some breaths. If you need to move and stretch and wiggle around, just to center yourself and bring yourself here. Oh, feel free to shake off the day, bless the day, and just come to here right now. Being present, allowing yourself to be inspired, to maybe meet new people. And those of you at home, oh, might also, <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> hmm. 
So, <laughs> this, was, this was produced in concert with my creative genius guru friend David. So thank you to David. <laughs> so this is a few of the ways we know that there are probably many more that we see. When we use the word see, it's a collective word, isn't it? it? There's so many people who have this reservation in some way about claiming or standing in their own intuitive knowing or their gifts. We're all intuitive because they have some notion that see means visual that we have to see. Actually, like less than 30% of the population actually see or have visions. Visionaries, and we have a few in this room, by the way, big ones, visionaries often don't see. They are maybe claircognizant, for instance. They may just like wake up in the morning and go, oh yeah, this is how we invent this. So there's so many different ways that we see. And I, inv I invite you just to really let all of these words, descriptions, labels, just maybe ignite your own intuitive voices, inspire you in some way. So <clears throat> the to to see the unseen workshop on Saturday at Hidden Springs across the street. This is just a little bit of a teaser. I love doing this workshop for this reason. It's not at all about how I do anything. It's not about how I see. It's all about you finding what you're ready to find for yourself. You may already have an, a notion of where your strong suit is. You may have had lots of experiences, but maybe in this conversation tonight, 
and maybe if you choose to come to the workshop, you might discover a lot of different ways that you didn't know that you're actually receiving information. And the truth is, is that you're receiving information tonight from each other. You know, we are far beyond one plus one equals two anymore. We are so exponentially powerful together as the collective. And this is another reason why we so appreciate in-person events because that energy like pings and inspires one another. So I have been asked to give a little bit of my, my background and, and to talk a, a little bit about various ways we see and then to a little description of my one-on-one -on -one and mentoring work and then we have this carefully, consciously creative collection here to share with you and hopefully inspire you further after this evening. So one of the things that we really would like to think about is where it is in our life, in our work, in our business. Hi, welcome. That <laughs> the a beautiful woman is passing. <laughs> we'll give her space to <clears throat> opportunities in our life that we may not realize we have ways to express and to work from more of a place of our true intuitive nature. So many of our authors and experts have identified some of the primary ways and where we saw many of those words in our word salad and I would just really invite you to consider your own individual experiences and then afterwards maybe remember a time and maybe not just, oh, I thought of him and phone rang. Well, that's a good one too, but maybe um, some really big event in your life happened and you noticed afterwards that you were wide open. Many of the things that happen to us that we consider or label as a crisis or a traumatic experience really awaken us in a very big way. I don't think I've ever worked with someone who's been in a car accident, for instance, who hasn't just And we have quite a few experts and, and maybe some in this room uh, where, where I live in near-death experiences and lots of information. Um, I happen to live in Charlottesville, Virginia and the University of Virginia fortunately has DOPS. So DOPS is the Department of Perceptual Studies. Um, and we have an incredible professor that works with children with past life experiences and, and folks who've had paranormal experiences. Um, so there are um, lot, lots of ways to, to be really thinking about intuition and your own intuitive experiences that are maybe a little more out of the box, if you will. And I would therefore direct you to maybe times in your life where things have shifted or you felt like there was a transition or you were guided to move to Ashland, Oregon. Um, where, where I live in Charlottesville, we have mountains also and a lot of people come across the mountain and just stay and they don't know why. Um, and your land and our land is very imbued with ancient wisdom and ancient energy. And so that you found yourself here from somewhere else 
might have something to do with that, don't you think? Yeah. So, I have had um, a really wonderful adventure in my life. I had a question asked of me yesterday, and that is, well, Lena, how did you come to this? How did you come to your healing work, and, and how, how, how did this happen for you? Well, this is my favorite story, and I'll try not to make it too long. You know when you're a little person, you think, this week I'll be a doctor. Next week I'll be a lawyer. Oh, I really want to build things, you know. You're always like playing around with different things you might want to do when you grow up and be a big person, right? Well, this girl had one idea and one only from the time I was a really tiny person. And that was I wanted to be a doctor. End of story. And so, what happened to me was, I asked Santa Claus when I was still of Santa Claus age, folks, okay? <laughs> I asked Santa Claus for only one present, and that was a stethoscope. And Santa Claus delivered. Oh, yeah. And what was even funnier, Santa Claus had a sense of humor, and this will date me a little bit. Well, that's, that's fine. I'm good with that. He also gave me a glass hypodermic syringe with a real needle. Well, I didn't see that. It disappeared. The rest of the story is I had an older brother who was a little bit of a trickster, just a little bit. We were at our grandfather's house. And he snuck into the kitchen, and he made a brew of baking soda and salt. And he injected all of the oranges in the socks at Christmas. <laughs> now you have to understand, we grew up in, in East Tennessee, and we didn't get citrus. Oh, dang. So, so a, you know, a little orange in the sock was like really kind of a special sweet. You know? And he went to everybody's sock and he took every orange and he injected them with this really bitter. <laughs> oh, anyway. So, guess what? I didn't go to medical school. So, when it was time to think about, I mean, I was always very medically curious. I think when I was early teenage, um, I became sort of the Ann Landers. I became sort of the counselor for my, for my friends, so I was obviously very geared to, to, to that kind of aspect also. And voila, it's time to think about my future in college. And I knew absolutely I did not want to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know why. And I wasn't going to know why for more than 10 years. Mm -hmm. I was going to live a very conservative, suburban to New York City, expected lifestyle. And I was not going to be exposed to a lot of what y'all were exposed to, maybe, and, and all kinds of mystical, metaphysical, holistic kinds of things. I, I, that was not in, in, in my culture at the time. Um, and so I, you know, pursued psychology and, and early childhood education and so forth. I just knew, and it wasn't because I didn't want to do the chemistry or the math, which of course I didn't, but there was just something, and it stayed with me year after year, and I followed my expected traditional path, if you will. Well, lo and behold, something really big happened in my life. Um, I lost my husband when I was 30, and we had a young child. And I noticed that after that, I was totally 
opened up to a lot of new ideas, new feelings, new thoughts that I didn't really understand or have a mentor to, to support me. One day I found myself in a yoga class in Westport, Connecticut, my first. And this woman was an amazing healing arts practitioner. And I went, ooh, tell me about this. Um, and we spent quite a long time in the hot tub, until we were pruny, I think, <laughs> with, I mean, every question I ever had all those years. And it was like, energy medicine? Oh. And so what happened was, my awakening or my, my awareness was I never wanted to be a doctor because I never wanted to do invasive medicine. Oh, energy medicine, oh goody, you know. I mean, I didn't even want to be a massage therapist. Um, and it was as if everything just kind of happened for me. Um, my first teacher uh, for learning uh, levels of Reiki was this amazing professor at Boston University. He used energy work to help his drama students open up their voices. And he did it, obviously, kind of, I mean, Boston University is kind of conservative, right? <laughs> And he also, I think, was doing a lot of TM in the day, and I think he had a mattress in his back room, and he was doing a little flying. He was amazing. And I would just, I would just ask him, well, I want to do the, you know, the next level. I would, he was just showing up for me. It was just really magic. And then <clears throat> I happened to be kind of in the right place at the right time. Because psychoneuroimmunology was just becoming a word in our language and understanding of mind-body medicine was just arising, arriving from folks that had letters after their names. So therefore, mainstream was listening. So I got to sit with Bernie Siegel at Yale uh, he was bringing the Simonton work um, of medical imagery for his cancer patients. And he had lost his, his wife. And I got to sit with Herbert Benson at Harvard, and he was bringing biofeedback to, uh, to medical practitioners and healing arts practitioners. So it was becoming like it actually known in our culture, not something we had to like whisper about. So I was really very fortunate to have these incredible mentors um, a as I began practicing energy medicine. At one point in my story, and, <clears throat> and actually after, um, after I worked with, with Bernie Siegel and, and Herbert Benson, I happened to be working uh, as a support staff uh, behavioral medicine conference. And it meant I got to take care of one of the presenters. And Norm Sheely was who was chosen for me to take care of. And Norma has been in my life until taking a pause. He just left us a very short time ago this summer. Mm -hmm. um, he was such an extraordinary man. He was a neurosurgeon back way before these other guys, when I'm sure every, all of his colleagues were just you know, thinking he was crazy. And Norm ended up being the founder of AMHA, or the American Medical Association Holistic Arm. And also the inventor of the TENS unit, if you've ever been to a PT and, or used the TENS unit. And the list stimulator, which has had a resurgence because of the opioid crisis. Um, so a quick Norm story. 
he, um, <laughs> this was really the early days for me. And for Norm to give me an, an assignment was like, uh, you know, really scary performance anxiety. And he would always speak to me like he knew that I already knew and that I was ready way before I did, if you will. So my quick story, and a couple of you in this room I think have heard this one, but I think it's worth a retell, is he gave me, I think, five uh, either names or just names and date of birth or just a first name and a location or coordinates. And he said, just have at it. He knew that at the time I was practicing energy medicine, but I was not even aware of what it would mean to practice intuitive energy medicine. And I just was like, oh my goodness, you know? Uh, and I'm writing down, you know, this person's name and and trying to give some information or background or condition or uh, any information about them. And I finished four of them. And the fifth one, I was completely, there was nothing. And I'm going, oh no, Norm will never speak to me again. Um, I was so scared. <laughs> and so, there wasn't, a, at this time in the story, there wasn't a lot of um, computers and email and all that sort of communication, but when I reconnected with Norm and gave him my answers, um, I said, well, I'm really sorry, but I think this one is a man. Because he even gave me a couple that were gender neutral names, so I wouldn't even know sex, right? Uh, but other than that, nothing. And Norm said, that's because he's dead. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, so that, that's my Norm story. And he mm -hmm. continued to be uh, a dear friend and colleague uh, until very recently. Mm -hmm. And if I ever needed some information, I really loved to collaborate with doctors and, and psych, you know, psychologists and so forth. And if I ever got you know, a little stuck or uh, I'd say, or I really wanted to give the research behind, uh, you know, particular recommendation I might make, I'd say, hey, Norm, would you send me the white papers? And, you know, it would be in my inbox. Um, and I ended up getting to train with him later in my life, which was just a few years ago. He had a uh, Holos University, which you might be aware of, uh, on the farm in Missouri. And he, he offered a very, very intimate, small um, event for a week for medical professionals primarily. And it was just a, a very, you know, treasured time for me to, to have that kind of, you know, one-on-one -on -one mentorship. So, um, we, we have um, all these amazing resources here in the Lending Library and in this room, I think. Um, there are many, many Norm books, uh, I'm sure, in the library. Dear Nikki was literally, we were curating books the other day and she had this, you know, big box. <laughs> For all, all of these, all of these guys. <clears throat> So I hope that answers your question about how I, a little bit about how I came into this work. And I have just really enjoyed um, teaching and sharing, and I don't even like the word teaching, but um, having gatherings of people like this to give you an opportunity to rather discover your own um, intuition. Welcome. So I was also asked to share a little bit about the question of what, what's it like uh, to have a, a healing session with you? <clears throat> what does a session consist of? Well, first of all, the one thing that you'll know about me is I'm not a formula girl. 
never have been and never will be. <clears throat> I, I don't relate to myself as one stream or the other. I've been informed by a lot of wonderful teachers and, and, and authors and sources through the years. And really and truly my one and only job is to show up is to really be where my client is that day in that moment. <coughs> Excuse me. And really respect the body's own intelligence and know that you will know, it will know what you're ready for first, second, and third, not me. And I know and respect a lot of other practitioners who, who have more of a structure or this has to be done first, second, and third, and I'm not that practitioner. It's much more important to me to be your partner in the healing journey, wherever and however that may be. That also might be that you might be a practitioner who's ready <laughs> to really move more in, into intuitive work. But as we begin, we might realize, well, actually we need to do some personal work first. Because we need to be grounded in ourselves. We need to be clear in ourselves first. And in that journey, that also opens us more to being in our wisdom and being present with, with our clients. So it's, it's really a very exciting journey for me to, I had a client the other day who, who decided it was co-navigator. I like that, right? So we are co-navigating um, rather than I'm a healing arts practitioner I'm here to make you feel relaxed or, or fix you or um, do a reading. So a lot of people wonder if I do a reading. And I usually answer that question with, I think you need to find someone else. Um, and it is, in our language, intuitive reading. I understand that. And I respect people who, who offer that. <clears throat> However, to me, that means I'm telling you a whole bunch of information and I'm not really interested in your saying well. I'd much rather you find what you need to find and that will change your life and that will change your health and that will change your way forward rather than um, me just giving you a whole bunch of information, which I could. <laughs> One of my favorite examples, a long time ago, a woman came to me, referred by her doctor, with a degenerative process in her shoulder, in her cervical spine. And he unfortunately said the bad words to the patient, and that is, this will never get better. Uh, we can't do anything for you. When she came to see me, she had about this much range of motion, maybe about that. She was a reductionist scientist. She'd never heard the word energy before. She thought her doctor was crazy. She had no background. She, had, she at the time, I believe, was maybe in her early 60s. She had no experience, no language, grew up in a very conservative Christian home, et cetera. And yet, she had a session with me. And we began a journey that lasted more than two years. When she came for her second or third appointment, I knew that this dear woman had horrific trauma early childhood horrific trauma. Now would I not be injurious, would not, it be really derailing for her if I just dumped that out and said, oh, by the way, Dad, no. 
she was so incredibly open and willing and little bit by little bit it was such i mean i felt such a privilege to be a partner in this journey with her somewhere around six months she came to my office she sat in that chair and she said lena i want you to tell me i know you know I want you to tell me now. And I almost started crying because I really knew that I, I was going to lose this patient and I really wanted to be there in some way. And, and I said, no, um, I think that you will find what you need when you need it and when you really feel more comfortable, more in your body more ready to receive whatever it is. And then the healing can take place, but only on your body's own schedule, timing, etc. Towards the end of our work together, she came in in tears, and she was not an in tears person at all. And she just said, thank you. She said, I would not, she said, she had dis not only discovered a lot of the trauma, I mean, extraordinarily, uh, she just went from one piece to the other, but she also had a past life experience on the table. Now, she didn't even know what past life experiences meant, but one day on the table, I mean, I, I had seen this a long time ago, but I would have never said a word to her. She was on the table and I'm holding her head and then her shoulders and she yelled out loud, take that sword out of me now. She had no idea even what she was saying or, or any, anything around it. And I said, okay, let's do this together and how would you like to remove it? And how would you like for it to feel afterwards? But she was, she had, she had just one thing after the other just completely open up for her, including information from earlier in her life and childhood and several spontaneous past life events that particularly related to this sword that went through here and came out here. She even described the hilt of the sword. And when she left my office, my prescription for her was a dance class, which she did proceed with. <clears throat> and when she left my office, she was, she wasn't 100% range of motion, but she was very different and she was a very different person. She had light in her eyes. Um, and I just so respected her that she was so willing and so open to just understanding that healing is, healing is a journey. So the question that I began to try to answer for you Every session with every person is different. I am, have no particular routine or structure. We often spend, especially in the first session, quite a bit of time in conversation, in dialogue, which is a little different than checking boxes in an intake form at the doctor's office. Um, during that time, the interesting thing that happens, I call story medicine. Often somebody will come across my threshold thinking that they have to have a medical condition to see me, which they don't, but that's what brought them there, only to discover something else entirely. And giving them the space and the encouragement and support to just really talk about it also acts as sort of a sifter. So. It prioritizes and helps them see, maybe I need to address 
a certain issue first or understand that a lifestyle choice or a family constellation might have contributed. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not a person who believes in, in the new thought statement of, well, you caused it when it comes to an illness or, um, or a condition. I think there are a lot of other factors, genetic and environmental and otherwise. So in that opportunity to really share in a very safe space really opens things up enormously. And then really in that opening, the healing can go much deeper. Then after we have a chance to have a conversation, we often go to the table or if it's a distance on the phone or Zoom, I'm still doing energy work, of course. In that event, meaning if it's a distance session, I'm doing rather um, a guided process, if you will, and going incrementally. I would say most of my clients who've been with me for a bit, who are on Zoom with me, and they've actually had, like, I love to work when I travel. Obviously, I'm here, right? Um, it's really a great combination to meet someone in person and have them have a, a session in person first and then follow up uh, with a distance session. Because the, you kind of have that feeling of rapport and you kind of feel like how the energy works for you. And I've had many, many clients then thousands of miles away actually feel like they're in the room with me. Um, I mean, the other day I had someone in Europe and we cleared an ear. <laughs> Who knew, you know? Um, so <clears throat> not to talk about me, um, so I would really rather have you talk to us. And yes, you can ask, you can ask questions. I'm happy to feel, uh, feel questions. But more importantly, I'd really like to ask you, anyone who feels comfortable sharing an experience with intuition, with a situation in their life, where they were guided, or maybe even an experience of, there likely are many people in the room who've experienced hands-on energy work, but maybe there are a few who haven't, so feel free to share that experience in a general way if you like. So at this point, um, I would like to just quickly tell you a few things about the resources here and then let you <coughs> take the floor. Um, <coughs> we have some wonderful people in, in the room here. Uh, one of them is Miss Judy over here. And this is an extraordinary journey. I get to do the Vanna White thing here. Mm -hmm. um, and this is Judy's memoir, mm -hmm. who was a critical care nurse for many decades, and then a hospice nurse, and had an idea that maybe there was a different way. So I'll let you find out about her journey. It's ex an extraordinary story, and it also <laughs> includes an experience and another dear one here has had at the Monroe Institute in the Charlottesville, Virginia area. So, and this is uh, Bob Monroe's work at the Monroe Institute, who was a big corporate executive, mahogany row kind of guy, who was having out-of-body experiences, paranormal experiences, and developed the hemisync technology, or uh, balancing left-right brain, which is now 50 years and, and growing. And, and if I may, uh, if I may have your permission, um, at least two folks in the room, and maybe 
three um, have had experiences at, at the Monroe Institute. And that's definitely a really interesting part of Judy's story as well. Um, coincidences. Before I finish, I want to offer the possibility in Ashland, and maybe you already do, to have a coincidence cafe. Mm -hmm. I think that would just be mm -hmm. so much fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so a coincidence cafe is an opportunity for a group of people, and it's usually un unled, um, to get together and share experiences about synchronistic events, coincidences, serendipity, how things, you know, relate from here to there. So for instance, Ashlyn has been amazing for me. In the short period of time that I've been here, I have had um, an introduction at a yoga studio in a dome, in a roundhouse, in a dome room, okay? My workshop is at the dome room, the skylight room in Hidden Springs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had a house call the other day and walked into their kitchen and they have this lovely little family room dining area with a dome ceiling and clouds. <laughs> um, and so just think about somebody might have a living room or a gathering space or an office space I think Coincidence Cafe would be a fun thing to do in Ashland mm -hmm. I, for me I call them cosmic coinkydings that's just me and so I reached out to Monroe Institute and found this beautiful Becca here. Somehow, we don't even remember kind of how, to see if there might be a Monroe community group in Ashland. And lo and behold, there, there's a Monroe community. <laughs> and may I tell this story? Sure. Oh, good, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I got invited, they're, they're, they're still doing uh, Zoom gatherings. I got invited the other day to this, this Monroe um, meditation event. All these incredibly beautiful, brilliant women. And it was Becca's birthday. So Becca got to choose which meditation, which Monroe meditation, we were going to do for the day because it was her birthday. And she chose The Expanded Self by Mark Serto. And I, I mean, imagine how many thousand, how many miles are we apart? OK. Uh, I bought Mark Serto's house in Nelson County, Virginia, close to the Monroe Institute. <laughs> I get to tell the story and get half. Goosebumps. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you.